This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favourite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. Okay, so Alan Holdsworth was obviously a genius, one of my favourite guitarists. I think probably, in a lot of ways, the most different, uh, most alien, most unique, whatever you want to say, guitarist that ever lived. Um, I guess there may be some that come after him, but for now, I think a lot of uh, great guitarists hold Alan Holdsworth to be at a, a kind of different standard. Now, as I say he's a genius, I'm interested in how he achieved his tone. And I found, I think, the key to his tone, um, and it's, you know, he's got various signature pedals. Uh, well, actually, no, he's got this one drive pedal, the Alan Holdsworth J-Rocket thing. Now, I don't think this is actually much of a key to his tone at all. The other kind of things, the UD Stomp was actually essentially a delay pedal built because Alan Holdsworth asked Yamaha to build this for him. I think partly as a sort of back and forth for him building some presets or doing some work with the DG amps. But essentially he said, I'd like to be able to replace my rack units with the UD Stomp. Now, you don't necessarily need the UD Stomp or the Magic Stomp to do the things that he's done with these. And that's what I wanted to just do this video about. Essentially what this is, is eight delay um, pedals in one or eight delay lines in one. And the way that Alan used to do this stuff, and I've been looking at this, the first kind of four delay lines are actually more to do with um, making the sound of the guitar spread over the stereo field. And the last four delay lines are kind of more of what you might find traditional people do with a delay pedal. The first four are sending things in kind of slapback kind of formation. You send something left quickly, something right quickly, something left slightly slower and something right slightly slower. So it spreads across the stereo field in this really fat way. Um, and then the, the other four, I think are less interesting. You could maybe do whatever you like to taste with those, but this first kind of four, I think is really key and could really help if you're looking for something creative to do with a delay pedal or, you know, looking for ways to have a fatter lead tone or maybe even get a lead tone that's close to Alan or not, I think in any case it does this really cool thing in stereo. I'm going to show you how to do it, um, look at the settings and maybe I'll show you how I would do it in the HX Stomp as well. Okay, so what I think is so cool about something like the UD Stomp is that we know that Alan Holdsworth actually programmed a load of presets specifically. Um, so we got essentially like you know, like An Andy Timmons in the Keeley Halo, we've got some of like Alan's tips sort of built into this hardware. So if we just listen without the UD Stomp. And so what I'm saying is that if we turn off the last eight 
or last four, sorry, delay lines. So essentially we've got eight independent delay lines. You'll hear that the first four if we turn that off. are essentially kind of dedicated towards and let's just look at the settings on here so our time is 29.7 for 39.9 3 96 and for 4 109 so we're going from i think i think they're milliseconds 29.7 milliseconds to um 39.9 to 96 to I think 109 or something like that. Anyway, so I'll just come off of this and back on. Um, but then these other, we just turn these off. You'll hear that we essentially get rid of the stereo imaging and we just have traditional kind of delay. which isn't doing the same thing that's just doing our delay kind of settings and so settings wise for this five is about 300 milliseconds six 400 seven is that 355 and eight 460 and those are panned again hard left and hard right <laughs> But the real key to this Alan Holdsworth tone, I think, lies in that first part of the of the preset. So I wanted to show you how I would dial that in on the Helix. Anything with a four tap delay will be able to I think cope with this first part of the effect. So let's just jump into the Helix now. So we can recreate some of this magic within the Helix or any other device that can do a multi-tap delay. I'm looking here at the, the preset 121 or 122, 123, Stereo Enhanced Lead Solo Patch 3. Um, I think I ended up really liking the sound of Stereo Enhanced Lead Solo Patch 3. And we can look at the settings for this if, if we want to. So what we're going to need to do is set up the multi-tap delay. And there is no one set of Allen settings. He kind of, I think, changed his settings up depending on the venue. He had sort of few presets for different bits and pieces. Um, so the time, if we keep it one second, feedback to zero, diffusion at zero. Low cut and high cut were not on, and I think we need to set the mix at least about level with the direct signal. Then, our T1 scale is going to be basically our first hit needs to be about 36, so 3. We can't get as granular as that on the actual uh, who's a what's it. Uh, the T2 should be panned fully right. And that, I think, we want something like 45, uh, so somewhere between 4 and 5 here. Uh, so we get 3, 4, and then our third hit should be about 92 milliseconds, between 90. So we'll take this down to 9 and pan fully left. And then T4 should be, I think, between either 110 or 112. So like 11, I think, should be fine for that. So hopefully this should do something similar, right? Ah, I can see what's happening here. Uh, we've got the chorus on. We don't want that on. And uh, aside from that, we should be fine. So
Then experiment with where it sits right in the mix for you. Um, so that first hit, I think, is anywhere in Alan's settings between 29.7 to about 36. The second hit should be between 40 and 45. The third hit between 90 and 96. And the fourth hit between 110 and 112. So if you've got a multi-tap thing, that's essentially all that's going on with this. It also looks like his second and th uh, third and fourth hit you can experiment with taking the level down so it looks like generally his settings either have the third and fourth hit at five or 7.5 so let's try five okay and then we should have something Let's try then experimenting with the mix again. Um, Okay, so that seems to be like the first half of what was going on there. Should be able to get you somewhere a little bit closer than just farting about in the dark at least. So give that a try. Again, have a little look at the actual settings within um, the, who's a what's it, the UD Stomp settings. This second longer part to me doesn't seem to be doing exactly the same thing. This is John from the future. I actually figured out why this was. So essentially the multi-tap delay works that you're doing a percentage of a second. Um, but the pattern repeats after a second. So you don't actually get the same effect as if you were to set the actual setting. So what I decided to do was instead use a dual delay, two dual delays, and um, the settings 300 milliseconds on one, 400 on the other as in that's in one dual delay and then the next dual delay the settings 355 and 455 like in Allen settings and that actually then gets you like the regular repeats whereas the multi-tap is like a stilted kind of repeat every second um, so I think that was what I was using in the intro so that's what I would suggest use two dual delays for the longer part of the delay so for that second part of the delay, instead of using multi-tap, what I'd suggest using is a dual delay with 300 and 400 milliseconds. Uh, mix about 25%. The, the mix of these delays tends to be about half of what the initial kind of stereo repeat thing is. And chorus and all of that stuff off. And then again, 355, 455 for the other so I've got one on one path and, and one on the other. Um, you could experiment with different kind of arrangements, but the, the key settings are to have a 300 on the left, a 400 on the right, a 355 on the left, and a 455 on the right. So that's another four delays, but the four tap doesn't work optimally for that particular setup. To keep the interval being 300 millisecond, 400, and et cetera, you need to be using the dual delay, not the multi-tap, which will just have a second gap and then it will do these repeats again if that makes sense and uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments um, have you ever tried a UD stomp I feel like it does still have a good reason to exist um, partly because there's hardly anything else out there that can actually do this sort of thing in one pedal catch you in another video soon cheers